In the realm of television sitcoms, the 1960s were a weird time with talking ponies, flying nuns, stranded Martians, and monsters living among us. However, not even one of them, perhaps with the exception of Barbara Eden's I Dream of Jeannie, could measure up to Elizabeth Montgomery as Samantha Stevens on Bewitched. Bewitched, obviously, is the 1964-1972 hit series that genuinely placed ABC on the broadcasting map and was their first colossal hit. In it, Samantha is a witch who marries mortal Darren Stevens, first played by Dick York and later by Dick Sargent, and reveals to him what she really is on their honeymoon. Initially shocked, he realizes that a detail like her being a witch really doesn't matter, this is still the woman he fell in love with. As their marriage continues and Darren continually insists they live a normal life, her magical family consistently manages to flip around things. What's more, they have two children, Tabitha, Aaron Murphy, and Adam, David Lawrence, respectively a witch and warlock. The individual who had to really sell it all, and this is no disrespect to anyone else involved, was Elizabeth, and she absolutely nailed it. Born April 15, 1933, her father was film and TV actor Robert Montgomery, who was quite demanding and created a difficult relationship among them that lasted all through their lives. She made her acting presentation in a 1951 episode of his popular anthology series, Robert Montgomery Presents, which led to appearances on other anthologies and episodic shows. During the 1950s, she was also on Broadway in Late Love and The Loud Red Patrick, and made her motion picture debut in Gary Cooper's The Court Martial of Billy Mitchell. In 1963, Elizabeth appeared with Dean Martin and Carol Burnett in Who's Been Sleeping in My Bed and Johnny Cool, which is where she worked with director William Asher, fell in love with him, eventually, and which would lead the two of them to Bewitched explains Herbie J. Pilato, author of Twitch Upon a Star. The bewitched life and career of Elizabeth Montgomery and Bewitched Forever, the two of which can be ordered from him directly, it was hate at first sight because she was late for the audition. However, at that point, they just fell in love and wanted to cooperate. They wanted a regular series because a series would give them the opportunity to cooperate consistently in a more routine way as opposed to a feature film here and there. Talking to the media early in the show's run, Elizabeth mused, isn't it lovely to play a witch? I imagine there will be no limit to the jokes. I know when we were filming the pilot, a light blew consistently. Nothing like that had at any point happened, and each time a light blew, the team would turn and take a gander at me, as if I really were a witch. I told Bill I'm waiting for the day when he congratulates the Special Impacts man on a particularly decent trick, just to have the man say, yet I wasn't even there. No Special Impacts were required for Samantha's means of making magic by twitching her nose. She explained, Bill said to me once, before I could possibly do Bewitched, you do an entertaining thing with your nose whenever you get impatient. Then he asked me to do it for him. I proved unable. I didn't understand what he meant. Then one night, my nose twitched and Bill said, that's it, and then I knew. We were at a Dodgers game, once and the bases were loaded, there were two outs and Sandy Koufax was coming up. He can't hit. However, Bill said to me, hey now, Liz, twitch. So I did and Sandy walked, and the winning run scored. Then I was at a Chicago Cubs game, and I twitched my nose for Ernie Banks, who hadn't hit anything all day. When I twitched, Ernie hit the ball right out of the park. Unfortunately, the magic couldn't last. When 1972 rolled around, Bewitched had been broadcasting in real time for eight seasons and for Elizabeth, whose marriage with William Asher was falling apart that was adequately long. She wanted out, details Herbie. ABC had actually renewed Bewitched for a few additional years. However, Elizabeth's marriage was not the same. The show was not the same. If you see that last season, she's just dragging her feet and bored out of her skull. Adds Ed Robertson, host of the long-running TV Confidential podcast. Towards the finish of the show, Elizabeth was scowling a ton. 
especially at the finish of a scene or during the final tag. She was visibly not happy doing the show then, and apparently that's been proven and factual. An actress always likes to do different things. That's the manner by which they develop and learn their craft. So the progress of a television show is a two-sided deal, because from one perspective it's steady work, and on another you want to play Shakespeare or something, however you are not able to. Herbie points out that when the show ended, a great many people assumed it was because of low ratings, yet in actuality they were still respectable particularly when considering that it was placed opposite All in the Family, which had debuted in 1971. It wasn't cancelled, he emphasizes, she quit, she ended the show. As it ends up, ABC wanted to continue and pleaded with her to do as such. Yet she simply refused and they accepted, reluctantly, that decision. Since she still had a contract with the organization, Elizabeth agreed to star in the TV movies, the Victim, 1972, and Mrs. Sundance, 1974, which is where she met actor Robert Foxworth, who she would wind up spending the remainder of her life with. And from that point, she went from one solidarity to another. The critically acclaimed A Case of Rape, 1974, and The Legend of Lizzie Borton, 1975, which her father resented, believing Elizabeth as Lizzie seemed to appreciate murdering her on-screen father a little bit excessively. All told, she starred in about two dozen television films, her last one being 1995's Deadline for Homicide, from the files of Edna Buchanan, and the audience loved the diversity of jobs she played, explains Michael McKenna, author of the ABC Movie of the Week. Big movies for the small screen, the thing about TV movies is that they gave individuals who were in lengthy running TV series something of a subsequent career. You always see the most familiar face on television because they are recognizable. You know, the audience watches a clip and they say, gracious, Samantha Stevens is in a TV movie. I'm going to watch that. So it turns out to be exceptionally insular in a way. A genuine example is a 1971 TV movie called Maybe I'll Return Home in the Spring, which stars Sally Field as a young girl who takes off with her hippie boyfriend to a collective. The reviews noted that individuals would check out see Sally Field be a hippie and a bit of a medication client when they had known her for Gidget and The Flying Nun. Ed's feeling is that Elizabeth realized that it would be difficult to shake the image of Samantha from the audience's mind, which is the reason, one might say, she returned to the beginning by embracing challenging diverse jobs, just as she had on TV shows like Robert Montgomery Presents, The Twilight Zone, and The Untouchables. It's interesting that I can't recall her doing a ton of comedic jobs after Bewitched, he says. She proved herself. The greater part of the TV movies she did were widely acclaimed, got God numbers, and it's one reason she made so many because her TVQ was exceptionally high. The organizations realized she was bankable and she was willing to extend herself. Elizabeth, who raised the three children that she had with William Asher, was quite active politically, including ladies and gay rights, AIDS activism, animal protection, and more. In her private life, she was married four times to Frederick Gallatin Kamen from 1954 to 1955 actor Gig Young from 1956 to 1963, William Asher from 1963 until 1973, and Robert Foxworth sometime after 1993, although they had been together for nearly two decades before that. Unfortunately, she waged a battle with colon cancer that it looked like she had won given that the disease had gone into remission. Yet in the spring of 1995, it came back full force and there was nothing that should be possible. She died on May 18 of that year and was just 62. Herbie mirrors, her legacy is always going to be bewitched, however individuals love the woman who played that job. Elizabeth had heart and soul in real life and I feel that that's her legacy. In the aftermath of her death, her three children and Robert Foxworth issued this statement. 
The image of Elizabeth Montgomery is the image of the medium of television itself. She was a friend who has been in our living rooms thousands of times and has impacted our lives in many ways. As an actress, she gave us pleasure with bewitched and groundbreaking rape legislation with her performance in a case of rape. As an activist, she has been a longtime ally of gay and lesbian civil rights, HIV AIDS causes and animal rights organizations. She was most an individual who loved life and her work and shared both with us liberally. And she'll always be remembered by her fans with a smile and a twitch.